Is a 700 PSI bite force actually possible? Forget the myths, forget the made up numbers online. We're actually testing this for real with a custom built bite sleeve. And we've tested some of the strongest breeds out there. And in this video, we're going to break down whether a 700 PSI bite is actually possible. And what would it take for a dog to actually hit those kind of numbers? So let's start with the obvious question. Where did this 700 PSI figure actually come from? And no one really seems to know for sure. You know, a lot of people throw around National Geographic as the source but there's not really any clear study or reference that proves that. There's a very popular video from National Geographic where they actually tested a, a Rottweiler, a Pitbull and a German Shepherd. And the PSI figures that they got on that video is now the standard bite force statistics for, that, for those breeds. You know, I see them all the time. But the problem I have with that video is he seems to be using a sleeve similar to mine and they're measuring in PSI but he, he never shows the actual instrument. You know, we don't see what's on the instrument. We have numbers popping up on the screen and the guy is shouting out the PSI numbers, but without actually showing us what's on that screen, how do we know he's not making it up? You know, for all we know, he could have shouted out 2 million PSI. And the problem is PSI or pounds per square inch sounds scientific, but in the context of dogs, it's actually not very useful. If we think about it, dogs bite with different teeth, at different angles, and with different surface areas. A molar has way more contact area than a canine. So how do you even measure PSI accurately when the contact points keep changing? So this is why that we don't use PSI on this channel. We use total force, so kilograms or pounds. The total amount of force a dog delivers, regardless of tooth shape or contact area, and that gives us the real world results. Now people often ask, where did we get our estimate that 700 PSI is roughly around 300, maybe 350 kilograms on my bite sleeve? And that's not a random guess. You know, we've tested a lot of the major breeds, the Corsos, the Pressers, the Rottweilers, and we've compared these results to the PSI numbers that float around online. And honestly, they don't really match up. You'll see sites that'll say a Presser Canario or a Cane Corso can bite two or three times harder than a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd. But that's not what our testing shows at all. In fact, the differences are much smaller than people expect. And it's those real numbers that help us form a, a more realistic benchmark. So let's talk about some of the heavy hitters we have tested on the channel. You know, dogs like the Cane Corso, the Presser Canario, and of course the Rottweiler. These are breeds that people expect to bite hard, and that's for good reason, you know. They've got the size, the muscle, and the reputation. But what's interesting is how similar the peak results are. None of them are miles ahead of the others, you know. The highest results we've had from those breeds are all fairly close, with a Rottweiler hitting second place at 100, 183 kilograms, and a Presser Canario in third place at 177. Obviously, the Cane Corso is still number one, Big Bronson. These are all incredibly powerful dogs, but again, not what you'd expect if you believe the online PSI statistics. The reality is we're not seeing one breed dominate the charts. It comes down to individual dogs, genetics, drive, and how committed they are in the moment. And this is what makes our leaderboard so interesting and different to the others. So when this journey first started, I had absolutely no idea how hard any breed of dog could bite. You know, all we had to go off were these online PSI charts that to me didn't really make much sense. So it was interesting to see when on the very first testing day, how much force were these dogs gonna deliver from just from their jaws alone? And the results were very surprising. You know, early on, we had a few smaller dogs that really surprised us. Not every dog that bites hard has to be a huge monster. Sometimes it's the ones that you least expect. I remember testing a few dogs that weren't really bred for protection work or they didn't really have a big reputation and they still managed to put up very decent numbers. 
Now they weren't breaking any records, but what stood out was their power to weight ratio and just their pure commitment and drive. Some of them hit harder than the dogs twice their size, just because of how explosive and committed they were to the bite. You know, it just shows you drive, confidence, and how the dog approaches the bite matters just as much as the dog's size. So which breeds do I think could possibly come close to that 700 PSI mark? Let's say hypothetically, a dog was going to reach the bite force equivalent of 700 PSI. What would that take? Like I mentioned earlier, we estimate 700 PSI would be around 300 to 350 kilograms of bite force on my sleeve. You know, that's a huge number. And to be honest, we haven't seen anything close to that yet. Our current record is 207 kilograms, which is already very, very impressive. And I think people take that for granted but still nowhere near the 300 kilogram, 350 kilogram mark. Now, there, if there is a type of dog that could get close, I'd probably be looking at the big livestock guardian breeds, you know, the Kangals, the Caucasian Shepherds, and the one personally that I think would bite the hardest, the Central Asian Shepherd or the Alibi. So we haven't tested these breeds yet, but it's coming. And I'll be honest, if one of these dogs can hit anywhere between 250 and 300 kilograms, I'll be seriously impressed. They've got the head size, the mass, and the bite structure, but whether they'll deliver it in a real bite is a different story. You know, a lot of the livestock guardian dogs were bred for guarding and kind of animal versus animal conflict, not necessarily biting and holding, although you could say, you could argue the livestock guardian breeds are kind of battle-ready dogs. You know, they will often have to go off into the woods it could be wolves or coyotes, and there are stories where these dogs have had to fight to the death just to protect this livestock, so you've got to give them credit to that. But for the biting and holding, you know, I'd say that title would go over to the American catch dogs, or Australian, some of you guys use the catch dogs as well. There's probably a lot of other countries that use them, but those dogs, the American bulldogs, the American pit bull terriers, they are the kind of dogs that once they latch on, you're gonna need a crowbar to get them off. So let's take a look at how bite force actually plays out in the real world under real testing conditions. You know, over the last six months, we filmed dozens of dogs, different breeds, different sizes, and different bite styles, all putting our bite sleeve to the test. Some dogs explode into the bite, some, some crush down and hold, Others try to shake and rip through the sleeve, and some of the numbers they hit are all logged in real time. What you're watching now, all these clips, are real dogs producing real bite force. You know, it's one thing to talk about PSI numbers, and it's another thing to actually see a dog hit 150 or 200 kilograms on a calibrated sensor in front of the camera. And this is something that no other channel has done. These aren't guesses, they're not estimates. This is exactly what the dog delivered at that moment. And it tells us way more than any online stat ever could. The variety in technique, pressure and commitment is one of the reasons we keep testing. Every dog brings something different. Right, so let's break down the current leaderboard standings. Right now, the highest bite force we've ever recorded is 207 kilograms from Bronson the Cane Corso. And I will give the PSI charts some credit for that. You know, that dog is expected to be at the top so far, but not by the margin that those online stats say that he will be. Um, second place is the Rottweiler at 183 kilograms. And third place is the Presser Canario with 177 kilograms. Again, this is a small sample of each breed. You know, in another year's time, we may have 100 samples of each breed, so we can get some much more accurate results. And that's the top end of the scale. And even then, we're still well below the 300 kilogram mark that we estimate would be the equivalent to a 700 PSI bite. And what this tells me is simple. These dogs are strong, ridiculously strong, but the internet numbers are often exaggerated. The idea that a Corso or a Presser bites three times harder than a Rottweiler, so far our data says otherwise. So the myth doesn't actually match the reality. And that's exactly why we do these tests. This isn't about which breed people think is the strongest. It's about what the real data is actually telling us. And we're going to keep adding to that leaderboard until we find out just how far this can go. 
So is the 700 PSI bike real? Based on everything we've measured so far, not yet. But is it possible? Maybe. But I think it'd be a very small percentage of dogs that could actually hit that number. You know, but that doesn't mean we're not going to keep chasing it. We'll be testing the Kangals, the Caucasians, the Alibis, and any other powerhouse dogs that come our way. And who knows, one day, we might actually see a dog get close to that 300 kilogram mark. If you want to follow this journey, hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments what you think could break the record. And if you've got a beast of a dog and you think you deserve a shot at the leaderboard, get in touch and we can set something up. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.